this video we'll be looking at how to deal with a particular kind of question that comes under the topic of polynomials. We won't be dealing with all of the theory that undergirds why we approach the question in this way, but hopefully along the way you'll see why these steps are going to make sense and you'll have an idea of how to solve this kind of question by using a similar approach. So, here is the question. P of x is a polynomial of degree greater than 3. When p of x is divided by x minus 3, the remainder is given to us as 1. But when it's divided by x plus 2, the remainder is minus 9. So the actual question is, what's the remainder when p of x is divided by both at the same time, x minus 3 times x plus 2? Well, my very first step, and in some ways this is the most confusing and arbitrary of the steps, is I'm going to let our polynomial, p, be equal to this expression. Now, I've got it in this form because here is my divisor, x minus 3, x plus 2. And here's my quotient function. Now, I don't know what the quotient will be because actually, p can be a whole variety of different polynomials depending on the value that q takes. And then, lastly, I have ax plus b here on the end. Now this is a really important part. This is the actual remainder that we're trying to find. And I'm just going to highlight the fact that since we're dividing by a polynomial of degree 2, that's our divisor there, therefore the remainder is going to be a polynomial of degree 1. You can see there's a 1 hiding there, we don't need to write it. But that's a really important step, and if you don't understand why that is, then this whole series of processes won't make sense. Now, having set up the question in this way, I want to recall your mind back to the remainder theorem, which is something we learned very early in polynomials. Based on the remainder theorem, I can interpret the data given in the question in this way. Since the remainder, when the polynomial is divided by x minus 3, is 1, I can make this statement, p of 3 is equal to 1. I can find the remainder when dividing by x minus 3 by evaluating the polynomial at 3. You see 3 is the 0 of x minus 3. And in the same way, when divided by x plus 2, the remainder is minus 9. So that's where this statement comes from. Minus 2 being the 0 of x plus 2. So p of minus 2 is equal to minus 9, the remainder that they gave us earlier. Now, the reason why this is useful is because I can interpret these equations here based on the form that I've expressed the polynomial in. So for example here, let's have a look, p of 3 is equal to 1. Well, if I take this line and I evaluate p of 3, so everywhere I see x, I'm going to substitute a 3. p of 3 is equal to 3 minus 3, 3 plus 2, of 3 plus remember what I'm doing here is everywhere I see an x I'm going to replace it with a 3 so I have 3a plus b over on the edge here okay now you can see what's happening in this earlier set of terms here because of the way I've phrased it what I'm dividing by this part here simply vanishes because that 3 minus 3 is a 0 anything times 0 will be equal to 0 so I can Eliminate this whole part here, leaving us with p of 3 being equal to 3a plus b. Okay? But I know what the value of p of 3 is. It's 1. Okay? So that means that here, I can actually say that this part is equal to 3a plus b. Okay? Now, having done that first step, I think you can see where I'm going to go here. I'm going to make a similar statement about p of minus 2 by evaluating this line here with minus 2 as my value for x. And the same kind of thing is going to happen. I've got minus 2 minus 3 times minus 2 plus 2 times q of minus 2. Now, on the end here, this is the important part in some ways. I've got minus 2a plus b. Okay, because my x has been replaced by a minus 2 here. Now, just like before, this whole series of terms vanishes because minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So now I've got minus 2a plus b on the end here, which I can replace on this left-hand side just like I did with that first line. Okay, so let's get rid of this. 
and place our minus 2a plus b. All right, now, hopefully this is starting to look familiar now. What you have here is two simultaneous equations in a and b. This is a good sign. We've got two unknown variables and two equations with which to solve them. And so I'm going to let this equal to 1, this equal to 2. And this is no problem for us. We've solved simultaneous equations like this before. And so simply I'm going to, in this case, probably the easiest way is to subtract equation one, 2 from equation 1. So, 1 minus 2. And you can see here, uh, not putting the full working, but because they're simultaneous equations, these are familiar. I think there shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. 1 minus 2, the 3a minus negative 2a will give us 5a. Okay. And minus this equation here, 1 minus negative 9 will give us 10. So that gives us our value for a, that's equal to 2. And I can now simply substitute that into whichever equation I like to find b. So I'll choose equation 1. I'll substitute a into 1. That gives us 3 times 2 is 6, plus b is equal to 1. So that gives us our value for b. Now, while we're finding what a and b were, well, if you remember, back up here, a and b will give us the actual values for the remainder. So now having found what they're equal to, we now have our solution staring at us. The remainder was ax plus b, but we found a to be 2 and b to be minus 5. So that means that the remainder we want is 2x minus 5. And there is our solution.